What's up guys and welcome to today's video. In this one we're going to be revisiting the Kicking Fundamentals series that there were a couple of episodes of before. The first one was about the arc of attack relating to the angle at which a kick comes across a target and retracts. And the second was about pivoting on the feet and how to correctly align the hips in order to kick correctly. This one is going to be about how to generate momentum and velocity into your kicks to make them nice and explosive and powerful. Now all of these fundamentals work together in a kind of synergy in order to deliver the best outcome. But at the same time as that, they're not me trying to tell you like, this is the only way you can do it and don't try any other methods. I think anyone who tries to put any kind of like heavy dogma on you and say that like there's only one way to do something and it's their way, you should be quite wary of. So I think a good coach basically like points in the direction of something and lets somebody kind of try it out and figure their own way out to do it. What I'm basically trying to do with these videos is kind of like point some things out to people and hopefully maybe highlight some blind spots or areas they've missed in their own training so that they can improve their own technique and get better. Now just before we get into it further, head over to my own personal channel at youtube.com com slash grant stevens ma i'm now uploading regular content on there and i've just put up a tornado kick tutorial a really in-depth guide including some exercises to improve that so head over there like and subscribe and all that good stuff as well so the first thing to start with as always is to make sure that you've not got any huge holes or big areas that you're kind of missing within your own kicking technique already so if you head over to the other video that i did last time which was five exercises to improve your kicks that should really help you as a good starting point before you build on it and the thing that we're going to be focusing on upon today is the really early stage at which a kick is initiated. So above all things, if you really practice these motions going into your kicks, the rest of what happens pretty much takes care of itself and the velocity at which you're able to deliver a kick directly relates to this initial stage. So to think of it this way, you almost want the kicks to be effortless or at least feel that way. And in my experience, the kind of thing that knocks off most people is if they've got something wrong in the initial stage, then it really knocks the rest of the move off. And they end up spending kind of all of their energy and the rest of the move kind of catching up and course correcting. This video is gonna be quite similar in nature to the kinetic linking video I did about punching power before, obviously though with kicks for this one. And the main thing that we're gonna focus on is how the arms are used to generate momentum in conjunction with the movement of the feet going into and then delivering a kick and some exercises you can do in order to implement those principles to improve your own kicking technique. So the different kicks that we're gonna look at are a spinning kick motion, which in this case is a spin back kick and a regular turning kick. I chose only two kicks for the purposes of this video as it can get a little bit overwhelming and confusing to talk about similar motions again and again. The area of interest that we'll be focusing on here are the early or initiation stages of the kick. And in these two kicks is these positions here between these. Now, in order to gain some reference material for this, we're gonna look at this study of Taekwondo kicks and the relation of the movement of the pelvis and how that affected the power and deliverance of a kick. So this makes a lot of sense in terms of me saying that the kick should kind of just happen and be effortless if the first parts are done right, with the peak pelvis velocity happening early and then the foot velocity happening later. So the pelvis is something you have more control over the movement of with it being a part of the core, whereas the foot is on the end of a limb with less control. Now this next part's really interesting and it basically talks about about how some of the subjects had a much more powerful side kick than others and it was determined that it was due to a faster kicking leg action and lower body movements but what made it work so well was actually the synchronization between those two elements so they're both important on their own but when done in sync it had a much more dramatic effect So let's take a look at the way I'm going into this spin back kick then. Now, as I initiate the move, the first thing that really happens is this motion with my hands. Now, everyone always thinks of this arm when they're talking about spinning kicks because it's the most obvious one that you see first. And it's like you bring it across into a kind of pseudo hook punch kind of position, which is really important. However, the real one that creates the actual power is this back one, which is often overlooked. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So you see the arm at the minute just kind of looks normal and then watch as I start to actually really create the force and speed with it, how much it kind of flexes from where it was. Now, you can see how tense it is here, but, and this is because I'm really using it to pull my body around. So it goes kind of from this regular position to a really forceful flex position to create this torque, which is the speed at which an object rotates around its axis. So my axis being the core here, this is gonna create torque and then bring this kick right through to the bag. Now I keep pulling this one across at the same time this one comes up and goes into that hook punch position, which is important as said, but not as important. I pull this one right back. This continues to pull me round. 
and the core all stays as one unit. My shoulders all are kind of straight and my arms are in line because if I started to twist out of alignment, if this went too far back or this one stayed behind, it's gonna twist the body and take away from the power. So as I keep pulling this round, this one is still guiding me here and I'm almost bringing up and bringing my elbow forward to continue that momentum. This is also the point where the leg has begun to lift to actually kick as well. And at the same time as this, this foot is starting to rotate through in order to get into that position. Now bring this elbow right back here. I'm still guiding it forwards as I'm doing the kick. And another thing to mention here, which is super important is as I do go into the kick, this one, my left arm, begins to lift upwards like this and that creates that twisted position in order to get the power so this is actually kind of holding my body into this position because if I didn't have it here and it was more through here I would my body would be more twisted this way and I would not be as on balance and able to really stack that momentum from this leg and deliver that powerful kick into there so you can see even as I push into the bag here how much my body is twisting up it even continues even more so and I'm holding this one here as well to balance on the other side it's like my body's almost flat and then it twists into this position here and so all of these things work together but really the power comes from that spin and then this point where the body kind of twists against each other and it said in that study as well that when the subjects were executing a sidekick it was the twisting of the pelvis as well as the kicking motion synchronized that made the power This begins from the arms and I'm lifting up this right one here. This one is coming back already to get myself into position. And it's basically the synchronization of all of these parts together. Now this one, I'm gonna almost whip it down and bring it behind me as this hip comes forwards and turns over so I can strike the bag somewhere around here. So as you see, this one is pulling me back again. And this one at the same time as the hips coming forward is almost going against the hip and as I actually extend the kick, it keeps moving forwards and creates almost, again, that counterbalance in motion to where I'm able to really twist and my body is staying on the sideways position because if I was not using this counterbalance in motion, my other hand's here up as well, balancing me. If this hand wasn't here, my body would twist more this way and my head would twist that way in the same direction as the leg. So the reason I do these things is obviously to create that power to really push that hip forward and also to counterbalance me as I do the kick so I don't fall off balance. Now in slow motion, this can look really strange and it looks like I'm kind of on my tiptoes as I kick there. But when you see it in fast like this, you can see how it all happens as one motion and it's not as exaggerated. But just for the purposes of this video and breaking it down, I'm showing you it like this. Now let's just go back very quickly and see how all of this works together at the same time as the foot begins to pivot. So can you see here, I've already pretty much got my hip 80% of the, uh, the way there into position and when people struggle with this, it's when they haven't got their hip into that position and they try to force it last minute. So they're actually kind of having to catch up with themselves and course correct as they go through rather than getting in position early and letting the kick just happen, as we mentioned earlier. Now, a simple way to get used to the feeling of this is just to pretty much try getting yourself into that pre-kicking position as fast as possible. So you can see I'm doing that here and just going through the motions of the technique, but emphasizing the speed of initiation going into it. So you get used to generating that momentum before the kick. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys and found it useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or anything like that. Head over to my channel at youtube.com slash and subscribe. And thanks very much and I will see you next time.